Let's see if we can execute a large query at scale using BigQuery. In this example, we already have an existing and large BigQuery public dataset for all GitHub repository code that's public, but we'll highlight how you can upload or ingest your own data using the web UI as well. Naturally, you could do this entire demo entirely in the command line or the BigQuery API, but I've got a few surprises that I can show you about the new web UI for BigQuery that you might not have seen before. So here it is, it's our challenge. Let's query over 2.5 billion lines of programming code from GitHub, do it inside of BigQuery, and it'll settle the age-old challenge of whether or not it's more popular for programmers and developers to use tabs or spaces when coding. We'll do that by parsing and processing every single line in over 11 million files, and then group the end report by programming language, like C, Java, Python, or Go, and then interpret the insights. Let's give it a shot. So here we are back in the Google Cloud Platform console. To navigate to BigQuery, this is the web UI. I have it pinned since I commonly use it. But if you scroll down in the products list, you'll be able to find it under Big Data. And you click on BigQuery and that'll take you to the web console. While you're gonna be practicing a lot more with the product in the dedicated module on BigQuery, I wanted to show you a quick lightning fast demo of processing a lot of data at scale so you can get inspired to use BigQuery for your own cases. So inside of the console, the majority of the window is taken up by the code editor, which is where you're gonna be writing, or in our particular case, pasting <laughs> an exi ex existing script for we're gonna be running lots of analysis on data sets. Now, if your data set doesn't exist, you can create a data set. And once that data set is there, it's an empty bucket where you can create tables from within there you can upload data from Google Cloud Storage, you can upload it from a file, link it from Drive, or just create an empty table that you can stream into results later. And that's one of the things that we're gonna be doing in our Internet of Things demo a little bit later on. In this particular case, the data set already exists, and that's gonna be the GitHub files data set. If you wanted to take a look at it after this demo, you can go to Explore Public Datasets. You can type in GitHub. There's lots of public data sets that are available. And you can see it's actually going to be GitHub activity data, which is many, many millions of files that are hosted publicly on GitHub that have been ingested into this public data set for exactly demos and analysis uh, like you see uh, in this demo. So we have an example script that we're going to be running. And the only reason why I made it uh, rather long here is I've broken up each individual part of the, uh, uh, of the code up for our end purpose of looking to see whether or not tabs or spaces is mo more popular. One of the neat tricks that you can do inside of the web UI, if you have a table, in this particular case, you have the project, the BigQuery project, dot, the data set, dot, the specific table. So it's just collections of collections of collections. You can actually hold down the command or the, uh, the Windows key, click on that table name, and that'll take you to really use for information about the table, like the schema, what columns are present, how large the table is and the details. In this particular case, we've taken a subset, which is about um, you know, 13 million rows here of the total GitHub data set, and which is 133 or so gigabytes to process. Really useful next step. If you wanted to preview some of the data without running any SQL, you can just click on the preview, and you can see we have individual code files, and if I'll just make this a little bit bigger, you can see uh, the actual code inside of this cell under the content uh, field here. And you can see things like the file path, which we can use to extract the language that the code is written in. Lots of good raw data and a really good language to process that raw data and analyze it at scale is SQL, the structured query language. And that's what you see we have written in the script here. So as you might imagine, working through all this code we first need to break out the problem uh, at hand. So we know that our code is in there in one large cell. So we break up individual lines using the split function. And essentially it turns that one massive code block uh, into an, a, small, a smaller array. So I'll show you what that actually looks like. You can run uh, just small subsections of code inside of BigQuery by highlighting it and then clicking down on the run, area, run arrow and then run selected. So you can see instead now, instead of a monolithic uh, block of code, each individual line has now been broken up into that same row of code. 
Now the really wild point that you're gonna see much a little bit later in the BigQuery module where it's dedicated to topics like this is it's still technically one row, even though these are broken out in different lines. And the magic there is that BigQuery natively supports arrays as data types, which is cool. So this is just one row with an array of programming lines, however long the program is, stored inside of a new field that we created called line. So it's essentially what the split function does. It says split the content, the blob of the code, uh, by new line into uh, individual lines. Uh, now to actually access, you can imagine what we want to do is look at the first starting character to see if it's a tab or a space to help settle our, our challenge. We uh, unpack that array using the unnest function that you see there, they learn more about. And then we parse out that first character just using a string function, which says, hey, for that flattened uh, line, I want to look at the very first position, the very first character for every single one of those lines of code and then do a comparison. I've broken up the comparison into this next uh, SQL chunk, which is just using regex to contain whether or not it's a tab, which is that special character there, or if it's the empty space in that first position. Once you've done that, everything from here on out is just aggregating and comparing based on the res those results to see whether or not tabs are more popular, spaces are more popular, you get the idea. But it showcases you some nice SQL aggregation functions if you're not familiar. There's things like counting the total number of lines, summing the total number of tab instances or instances of spaces, comparing the two with this if operator here, pretty basic SQL stuff. And then we're extracting out the file path. Remember you saw that .js at the end of that file name? We're just extracting out that here. And then we do a quick filter on an aggregation to make sure that we're excluding the long tail of GitHub uh, code commits and code files that don't ultimately have more than either 10 tabs or 10 spaces. Um, and that helps us kind of trim down to only those real uh, significant pro uh, programs that have been committed. And then we just do the slight ratio of the sums and a little bit of formatting and we're good to go. So let me comment back out my little exploration. We'll run this whole thing and process all those millions of lines of code. And uh, what's wild is, since I ran this demo a little bit earlier today, we get the result back immediately because BigQuery behind the scenes can cache uh, queries that says, hey, I've already returned this result. Um, what you can do, and just so I can show you uh, how fast this query will run when it's not caching, because <laughs> it's a little bit like cheating for the purposes of showing the speed, is we'll actually just run it and say, hey, BigQuery, don't use the, don't use the cache results. Normally, unless you're trying to show the speed of BigQuery, use the cache. Because if someone is, you know, already uh, ran the query against it on your on your particular project, uh, they can run it again and just get get the advantage of that cache query. So you see, it took us about 13 seconds, and we processed 133 gigabytes of data from that public data set. So let's expand the rows here and do a little bit of insight diving. So you can see the most popular language by the total number of files, not by the total number of lines, but the total number of lines, it looks like it's a C, but the total number of files, there's more Java files than there are anything else. We're ordering it by the number of files. And if you wanted to change that for your report, yeah, go right ahead. You can do that within the order by in SQL or link it in like a Tableau Looker or Data Studio dashboard. But the real insight is the ratio of tabs to spaces. So just looking quickly down here, you can see spaces are dominate, except in the case of C which is where tabs have slightly more, 600,000 versus the 500,000 for spaces. Even more interesting insight that you couldn't really get doing this analysis uh, any other way, especially not manually, is the program language Go actually has uh, the inverse. It's one of the only ones where it has strong tab preference versus space. Now, I'm not a Go expert, but when I did a quick Google search, it's because their compiler, how it actually emits the code, it puts those spaces in for you. It's not like when you're programming in Go, you're doing the, the spaces consciously instead of the, or the, sorry, the tabs consciously instead of the spaces. So that's BigQuery processing it in 133 gigabytes, 13 seconds with no infrastructure. So you don't need to worry about a lot of the knobs or spinning up clusters to support data workloads or if multiple queries are running at the same time, is that gonna affect your performance? Uh, there's a lot that's happening that you don't see. If you're really, really interested, the last thing I'll show you is a really telling stat. So if you click into execution details, 
in this new web UI that's in, in beta for BigQuery, you'll see a really interesting step that I, I quiz a lot of people on. What do you think slot time consumed means? You know it took 13 seconds to run this query. What is this 49 minutes? If you actually hover over the question mark, it says, you know, it's a unit of computational capacity. So in essence, what BigQuery is telling you, hey, across all of our workers, we uh, did essentially 50 minutes of work massively in parallel, 50 minutes, so that your query could be returned back in 13 seconds. And best of all for you, you don't need to worry about spinning up those workers, moving data in between them, making sure they're sharing all the results between their aggregations. All you care about is writing the SQL, finding the insights, and then running that query in a, in a very fast turnaround. But there is, abstracted from you, a lot of distributed parallel processing that's happening. So that is the uh, super high level BigQuery demo. Uh, later on in the course, you'll see how you can actually write SQL just like this for doing machine learning uh, and exploring those public data sets and building uh, your machine learning model in one of your next labs. We'll see you there.